All right, so this is what I've got so far in the science lab scene. In the last video, I showed you um, a render whip. And I had the, the PDA here with the compact flash cards and some other stuff. And I made a really simple stool. Uh, it's not going to be overly visible. If I decide that it's more visible, I'll work on these legs. But what I want to do is I want to put a computer monitor up here and I want to texture it in Substance Painter. Very, very, very basically. All right, as simple as you can get, but it's going to look good. All right, so I'm going to use a preset and the presets look good. You can fiddle around with it if you want to. Not going to do any decals, not going to do anything special, but it's going to fit my scene. All right, so basic stuff. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to create a cube, scale it down, and figure out roughly how big the monitor is going to be. So it's a small monitor. Okay, now I can scale it up later on if I want to. All right, let's go a little bit bigger than that. So let's say that's a start. I'm going to press the slash key focus just on that okay so here we go I'm gonna bring in an edge loop to about there and I'm gonna press 3 for face selection I'm gonna grab that and S to scale and scale it down and I'm gonna do that kind of thing and that's what I'm gonna have so far okay select that face I to inset pull in a little ways and I'm gonna pull back I'm going to inset a little bit more. And I'm going to pull back some more. Like that. Now, I think I'm going to take the whole thing and scale it in the Z. Make it a bit more like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put on a bevel. I'll go for 3. 0 0.02. But I think I'm going to bevel more by hand. So I'm going to edge selection, shift alt, and click there, and there, and there, and there. Yeah, I'm going to do that. And control B. You all mouse up. Do that kind of a thing. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab that edge, and this edge, and this edge. I'm going to bevel those by hand as well, just like this. I'm going to come back here and look at this for a second. Maybe it's too long. Bring that up a bit. And control B, I'm going to bevel that back thing there. Okay. Let's now come in here, shift alt and click this edge. And let's control B spread it out, roll my mouse back to zero, make it a little bit smaller, E and Alt S, and I'm going to pull down. Now, I may have some problems here. I'm going to select it all, Alt N, recalculate outside, and merge by distance just in case. Let's try that again. And I notice that I'm in local. I'm going to switch back to global, E and Alt S, and I'm going to pull down. That's better. Okay, that was the problem. In edge selection, shift alt and click this edge and this edge and control B. Spread it out. One, two, three, maybe. Okay, that's what I wanted right there. Um, let's press the slash key and just have a look. Okay, now there is something else I want to do here, I realize. Press the period key to zoom in, and the slash key to focus on this. I want to, and three, I want to get rid of that face there. Actually, yeah, I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. Look from the front, wireframe, vertex. I want to grab these vertices here. Make sure I'm in front of you and want to pull that up to make like a little area for like a panel. Put 
put some buttons on there. Now, you, for the bevel, I'm going to choose angle. And, you know, I could do stuff like this. And that'll clean that up. That may affect substance paint, or sometimes it does when I have this on. Um, okay. Let's do something else here. Let's uh, bring the 3D cursor there and Shift A, Mesh Plane, scale it down, rotate X90 and scale it again. We'll put like what seems to be like a power button or like a logo button there. Scale that in the X, you know, something like that. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna extrude back and I'm gonna delete that. Let's see what happens if I take that and then this and put on the same uh, modifiers. And let's uh, just uh, join it and then we'll get the same bevel and it's all part of it. I can do a little inset if I want, a little indented region. So uh, sure, let's do that and then we can put buttons in there later. So let's just go ahead and make, make something, a cutting tool to do our indent. Slide it down here maybe in an edge selection. Maybe we'll pull that out. Just have a few buttons in there. So I'm going to press 1 for uh, vertex selection. Shift, Alt, click. Sorry, Shift, Control, B. I don't know what I was saying there. There's 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll do it like that. Let's look from the front. I don't want it too close to the bottom because there's going to be some dirt and stuff you'll see very soon. In fact, I'll make it a bit smaller. I'm going to extrude it back. I want it solid. All right. And I don't want it in too far. Just a little. Okay. So with that there, I'm with that selected. I'm going to shift alt and click that, and I'm going to press N. And I've got Bool Tools installed. It's a free add-on that comes with Blender. So I'm going to come over to Edit, uh, Bool Tool, and I'm going to choose Difference. And I am just going to, I'm going to hide that for now. And there's my Bool Tool. I'm just going to go ahead and apply. I'm going to delete the Cutting Tool. And you don't see that much. So I'm going to come in here. And if everything works out, I'm going to Shift Alt and click there and there. And I'm going to Control B give a little bit of a bevel to that um, that didn't work too well so what I'm going to do is alt n recalculate outside m merge by distance uh, and I'm also going to apply any uh, rotation and scale just in case and that's now working a little bit better I roll my mouse down to zero one I'll put a couple I'm going to turn all these things back on and I'll get a better effect all right I'm not sure what the deal was I think this is sticking out a bit far so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna just pull it in okay that's my basic frame of the monitor that I want before I go any further I am going to I'm gonna to want to create a screen so I shift alt and click that and the different ways to do this. I could do it square or I could do it like this. I'm gonna try it like this. So I'm gonna go Shift D, pull that out, P to break it out, come back and look at this. And I see I just got that, that's fine. So I'm gonna take this and have to make face and let's just pull it back in. We might curve this later, we'll see. In fact, I might even bring in a separate plane but for now I'm going to leave it straight. Okay, let's save. We also need a little bit of a stanza, slash to bring everything back. And uh, let's select this. And uh, I'm just bring the 3D cursor there. And I'm 
gonna bring in a circle. Let's go for just 16. Scale it down. Relatively wide on there at first. Shoot it up. And we can do stuff like that. E and S. Do that and come up into. Mm, I think I will probably have to bring the computer down. Take this and extrude it down a bit. And let's bring the whole thing up. And obviously you don't want it that wide. So scale shift Z. Let's put control one on there. And edge loops. liking it let's focus uh, just on that and let's get rid of whatever the hell I've done up here let's try getting rid of that did I have something extra in there perhaps I did I don't know all right let's do that slash okay uh, okay, I don't quite like that yet, so we'll just work on the shape of this thing here. Um, okay, let's scale shift Z on that. No. Come out. Where am I? Okay, you're gonna go there. And you're gonna go here. And maybe back. We'll tilt it later. That's fine. Okay, good enough for now. Alrighty, so now let's focus just on this guy here, actually. This and this, the, and that. You know what, I think actually, I think I need to make this smaller scale ship Z. I think I need to do that. Whether it seems like it can hold the monitor or not. I just seem to like it better. Okay, let's focus just on those things. I can come in here and I can, uh, whatever, we're gonna rotate in a minute anyhow. That's all right. Okay, so. In order to texture this in Substance Painter, we need this UV unwrapped. So uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of them together. And actually I'm gonna take this one, come over to the materials, new material. And I'm gonna call this uh, monitor body. And this one, new material, monitor stand. That's all we have to do. Okay. I'm going to take them both and I'm going to go U, Smart UV Project. I'm going to give it an island margin of 0 0.02. Done. That's all I'm going to do. Save. Take both of these now, not the screen, and export as FBX. Turn on selected objects, a place you want to do this. And I'm going to call this uh, monitor uh, tutorial. Just anything. Okay. Now I'm going to start Substance Painter. Okay, here I am in Substance Painter. So I'm going to go File, New. I'm going to go with 1024. I'm, the template is the metallic roughness. Um, and I'm going to select monitor tutorial. Press Open and okay that will bring it in and now if it looks a little weird which it does like part of it is disappearing that's because i probably have some polys flipped the wrong way so let's go back to blender and check and sure enough the stand is backwards so i'm going to come in select it all all 10 recalculate outside okay that's now okay because everything else on the inside save 
Um, I don't know for sure, but I think I might have to unwrap again. Smart UV project, same settings, save and export that again. FBX, monitor tutorial, selected objects only, those two. Back in the substance painter, file new, 1024, select, monitor tutorial, open, okay. Discard that one, and there it is. Now, of course, there's no screen, so that's fine, but the stand looks better. Okay, now, before we do anything, though, we need to bake our textures. So, you can see, first of all, I've got my material, my monitor body, monitor stand, that's great. Texture settings, scroll down, bake mesh maps. I'm going to choose just 1024 and bake, and then watch it. Press OK. And there it is. Doesn't look any different, really. I come over to layers, and I'm going to delete this first layer. And I'm going to go to smart materials. They're smarter than me. All I have to do is apply it, and I'm going to leave it. I'm going to scroll down to this plastic dusty. It's perfect for what I want. Put it in. Now, I am on monitor body right now. Look at that. Just what I want. Now, if you want, you can go in here and you can adjust how much dirt, how much dust, and you can paint, you can do all that. I don't need to do that. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with what that's done. So I'm going to choose monitor stand, delete that, and I'm going to drag in the same one. And that's it. Now, um, if you have a seam, I didn't UV unwrap this with marking seams. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna rotate this a little bit out of view. You can mess around with triplanar projections, you know, down here, and sometimes that'll fix it. But I think that might be when you've marked seams, so I'm not gonna worry about that. I've got what I want, and so uh, I can I can live with that. So now that I've done that, I'm just gonna go file, export textures. You can save your file, export textures. Uh, I'm going to choose Blender Cycles. Uh, actually, I don't really need to. Um, it's just the way it handles some of this. Uh, but I'm going to export monitor body and monitor stand. Then I'm going to choose where I want it. I'm going to do it under Texture Test. All right. It'll tell me what it's coming out. So there's going to be called Monitor Tutorial, Monitor Body, Base Color, etc., etc. I guess I've got an emissive on there too. There's a few that I probably don't need, but press export and it's done. Come back to Blender. All right, I'm gonna go into the shading tab. All right, and there's my monitor. Let's make sure, let's hide this. Let's get the monitor and the stand and nothing else. There we go. Okay, so select monitor body, go to look dev, and there's the principal BSDF. Select the principal BSDF, and as long as you have a Node Wrangler installed, you can just go Shift Control T and find your texture stuff. So select all the ones with monitor tutorial uh, that are part of the body and not the stand. Just Shift all, and Shift and select them. Principal texture setup does it automatically. Boom. There's the texture on there. I'm gonna do the same for the stand. Select that, Shift Control T. Select these ones, Shift, and the stand is done as well. Okay, I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna go back to layout, slash. Now, if I press, if I go in and look dev, it'll take a minute, it's a pretty big scene. You can see my monitor is is there, and it will blend in with the other stuff uh, in a moment. Let's go back out here though and have a look at this screen now. Let's look from the front. Okay, so how am I going to do the screen? I think I'm going to come in here and with it highlighted, I come over to UV editing. Let's close up all of this old stuff. And where are you? There you are. Okay. Let's just press one, 
look at this okay and I'm gonna go U I'm gonna do project from view all right and here is the UV I just hit a with my cursor over here I'm gonna press s to scale and I'm gonna make it as big as I can to fit in here press G to grab and I'm gonna move it right to about there okay so now I want something to be on this screen so um, I'm going to use different ways that you could do this I think the way I'll do this is I'm going to select UV export UV layout and I'm going to come to a folder that I am familiar with I'm going to call this uh, monitor tutorial screen UV that's what I remember and it'll export as a PNG it should be 1024 by 1024 there it is okay that's good enough all right with that done make sure I save and I come over to my drawing program which happens to be flash for me I've set this to 1024 by 1024 so I'm gonna go file import to stage blender model export modern tutorial screen so there it is <clears throat> okay and it fits pretty much my document size I'm gonna make my background pink I'm just used to that and I'm gonna lock that go to another layer now whatever I put in here although I don't want to go too close to the end is what I'm going to see so I'm gonna go ahead and type in white and choose like a I don't know I don't have any good fonts but courier or something like that I don't know let's try to see what this looks like um, let's call this um, I don't know uh, system link and set that to the center get rid of that and just have that okay file export now you keep I, I mean I could put a border but I'm not going to export let's put this in the same place as we had it before so everything's findable again put it under export monitor tutorial screen PNG and full size all right good okay okay back to here let's we got our screen yeah okay now uh i don't i don't have uh let's do this let's call this uh modded monitor screen text so i got a material on it. let's go to the shading editor let's uh, bring everything back let's just actually focus maybe on those two things okay i'll go back into here okay so select that <clears throat> i've got a material for the screen beautiful okay shift a texture image texture find it connect it to the base color and it's in there with a different colored text. I started actually with green and then when I put this I got orange. So I'm gonna switch this over to, let's see if I can do this all at once. That the file, I'm just gonna do it again. Monitor screen. I'm gonna come back and I'm going to open that again. And I'm going to get this orange color. Okay, I'm just it's just something that I liked. So now we come over here. And we have a look. Let's save that. I've got that. I may or may not have to rotate this stand. We'll see. But there is one thing that I want to do. I mean, I can put buttons on. You can do all that. What I thought I was going to do is um, 
rotate this a little bit. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to look from the side, let's say just there. I could rotate it from here, might as well. So I'll go into wireframe and we'll grab there, Shift S, cursor to select it. And we will switch to the 3D cursor. I want to, to rotate uh, the screen and that. I don't think I'm going to bend the screen right now. So let's just uh, R to rotate and pull it up like that. We'll take both of them and let's look from the front. Now let's just look from perspective. So I want that tilted and let's just rotate this in the Z, the whole thing like that. My camera view is right there. Uh, rotate the Z. I want a little bit of the side and most mostly that. Um, so yeah, there's there's the, the monitor. I might let's go back to median point. Might want to bring it down and not, you know, just do that. Alright, so I don't know, assumingly it connects wirelessly, or maybe I make some wires, I don't really know. Let's just have a look again and look dev. Alright. So, yeah, I got this thing here and this thing. So I'll, I'll do a quick uh, render and then you can see what it looks like. I would probably make this larger. But anyways, that's how you can very quickly use Substance Painter without mucking with anything. Um, and, you know, uh, model this thing, texture this thing and, and get some graphics on there. Um, I think what I probably will be doing is not putting text on here, but I think I'll probably be doing an image that you would potentially see under the microscope, some cells or or um, something uh, biological like that, that would tie into the theme of some organic material, potentially vegetation growing in there and looking at a sample. Although maybe this sample is infecting that, you know, so that doesn't have to be like a leaf or something like that. It could be could be bacteria or some microbes or or, or some cellular stuff um, so yeah so that's what we're going to uh, continue to work on so I hope that's just a little bit helpful I realize it's very very basic uh, texturing but um, you know it's better than uh, leaving the models with nothing and really you know in order to achieve that in in blender um, it would take a while you know to, to do that and of course in substance painter uh, there's a lot of uh, parameters that you can you know adjust $150 Canadian so I don't know what that is $170 $180 US you know it's real money but uh, you know it's, a per it's an indie per perpetual license um, after a year there's no more um, maintenance or whatever but it's a program you could use for many years it's not that expensive it's like getting your you know tires changed or something like that a little bit of repairs on your car and you got substance painter and it's fantastic so um yeah we'll do more on that in the future thanks for watching